Okay, my friends, this is this is kind of exciting. I think I have answers to the problems we're having right now with autism and all the different health issues. Virtually all of them are related to enzymes that come from bacteria. In essence, bacteria utilize their ribosomes, which I will show you in a minute, to build the protein enzymes that carry out a wide range of essential biochemical reactions within the bacterial cell. You have to have these bacteria producing enzymes or you will fall over dead in two steps. Okay, my friends, this is as serious as it gets. Disease is, is running crazy, and they really don't have a whole lot of solutions. And some of the solutions are so costly, you can't afford to do them, even if they did work. Now, what is the root cause of all of this? It's ATP synthesis. Synthase, which means ATP is, is the energy that runs virtually everything in your body, and it is produced in copious quantities if the bacteria is there to create the enzyme to create and do the synthesis. The enzyme is the key. ATP synthase, that enzyme, creates a, over a million years of breakdowns and reassembling of these chemicals to turn into ATP. Over a million years it would take. It does it in one second. You don't have the enzyme, you don't get the product. If you have a very low count of ATP synthase, you're going to have low count of ATP delivered to your body. They just did a study. I'm going to show you some things that are just now being discovered. And it really, the whole root cause of all of this, if this is true, and this is what needs to be discovered one way or the other, is the bacteria that creates the enzyme, which makes that million years of chemistry. What bacteria is it, and do you have enough of it? That's not a big thing to do to figure out. I don't know why it hasn't been done because we have found very, very good results, and they have found very, very good results with what they call FMT, which is a bacterial replacement inside your guts, which is the just natural bacteria that dissolves and breaks down all the food and digests it and makes your body run correctly. That is the key. All right, it's just extremely simple. When you get invaded, because it has to come through your skin and then through the membranes, which are these fluid-filled highways that have the bacteria and the enzymes that attack these invaders. There's two layers. It's what's called a, di, uh, a bilipid membrane. There's two layers of phosphates with of gooey stuff in between where all of this bacteria creates these ribosomes. So think of that. You got an upper layer, you got a lower layer. And now they're starting to focus on, and they didn't even know this stuff existed until a few years ago. 2018, they, they acknowledged it. Yes, meet your interstitium. I knew about this. I wrote a paper on it in 2015. I said, you guys got to start looking at this. And that's where our immunities live. And this is all we have to do is find out what's in here and what bacteria we're missing, because that'll be what enzymes we're missing. And if the enzymes are missing, the chemistry is not going to get done. You're going to be invaded. You're not going to be able to stop yourself. And we, I'm going to show you an article that took me about a million years to read, but it was worth it. Okay, I am just going to make this as simple as I can make it. And it is simple. There's this what's called ATP. All right? It's a, a certain chemical. It's called an enzyme. And it provides the energy for our, to do everything in every living cell. It does muscle contraction, nerve impulses, chemical synthesis, breakdown of everything, transfers energy, intercellular energy transfer. It's the currency, the molecular unit of currency for life. It's the most important thing in your whole body. ATP. 
and it, and I understand it very very well now. I've been studying it for many years, and what's happening is the bacteria. And there is a bacteria or a certain number of bacteria that create this ATP. Those are weak or dead. And when you don't, well, they're not going to be completely dead because you you have to have some energy to do. But when you get weak, it means you have a, an insufficient amount of ATP. What creates more ATP is bacteria. The bacteria create the enzymes. Here's a process right here. You got a bacteria, and they live in your interstitium primarily, and in the gut linings and all that places. There's certain areas where they live, and they digest the food, and they do whatever they do. But their primary job is to shoot out these little ribosomes. Well, what is a ribosome? See how there's a whole batch of them in here? If that thing died, they'd all go at once. And that's what they're seeing, and they don't understand it. What's happening is that series of species of bacteria is being killed by some invader. And when it dissolves the cell membrane, it flushes the body with these ribosomes. Well, what are the ribosomes? Normally, they're supposed to squirt out of here like one at a time. Blip, 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 blip. These are the ribosomes. They come out of here. Now, and they come out as protein chains, and they ball into a ball, and then they do their chemistry. Now, here's what it is. This is the ribosome. All right, so here's a ribosome. It comes out from the bacteria. Blip, blip, blip. Not all at once. There's a ton of them, and they just keep coming out one after another. Now, when they get triggered to do their job, they unsheath, and they turn like this. And I mean they turn exotic. Now, they do two things. They can come up to be an enzyme, or they can be a protein. They both unsheath, and all of those particles turn into enzymes or proteins. They're both the same thing. One breaks and one builds. That's the only real difference. And they look like this. And if they're not exactly like that every time, they don't work. They just don't work. If this one here is like that, it's done. It doesn't work anymore. So you have to have the bacteria living to produce these one right after the other. And if they die, they will flush the system with this ATP one shot. And they're seeing that as, as maybe a problem. Well, it is a problem because the bacteria is dead, not because you're being flushed with the ATP. ATP is going to go out of the cells when they die. Now, the new research, they basically have it backwards, but at least they understand the layers of the membranes and which layers are being disrupted and causing bacterial death. This layer was never even known was here. It's the, it's the interstitium. It's the um, fluid-filled highway that carries all of the bacteria and ribosomes, enzymes, all that stuff. And they go to wherever they're needed to attack invaders. All right, see, they're seeing this is really being backwards. The bacteria hold the ATP and release it as necessary. But when they die, they just release it all at once. So they're saying instability of the outer bacterial membrane, the outer membrane towards the skin, that outer membrane, that deterioration because it's being invaded. We have seen from this associated report in 2019, it is associated with bacterial death and ATP release. It remains unclear whether the loss of ATP results directly in bacterial death or the bacterial death is the direct result of impaired outer bacterial membrane and the secondary bacterial death. However, since the inner membrane the below membrane remains intact, is considered generally devoid of ATP, the later seems more likely. So in other words, you're being invaded from top down. So when we look at this membrane, you're getting invaded from the outside coming in. I don't care what it is, your organs, your skin, whatever. It's got to get through this layer. That layer has those enzymes that create the ATP and the energy to fight off the invaders. 
And when they break through that membrane, they see the ATP flushes everywhere because it's the, the, the bacteria that it was holding it died. And it released the ATP enzyme. Not that they, the ATP enzyme caused the issue. The ATP enzyme is now just being flushed through the system because the, the bacteria that held it just flushed it because they died. This is really simple. Ribosomes, the little blue balls here, are inside of the bacteria, which is the source of the enzyme. Those little balls come out and create the enzymes. So if all of these bacteria died, they just flush the system with ATP synthase from these ribosomes, and that's what happens. Now, they see it as backwards. This is because of the death of the bacteria, the invasion through that upper membrane, kills the bacteria, the bacteria flush the ATP synthase, which is inside these ribosomes. This is how it works. You got the bacterial cell, and these are all these little dots in here are the ribosomes. The ribosomes come out, and they normally create the ATP synthase. Inside this ribosome, it just unfolds. It's like a big long ball like this that comes out in that little ball. All right, let's go back to the little ball and how it comes out. All right, these are the ribosomes. See ribosomes? They come out and make enzymes. Yep. All right, concentrate on this. Ribosomes, which I'll show you in a second, build the protein enzymes that carry out a wide range of essential biochemical reactions in your body you don't have those you're gonna go down and go down quick so what happens a bacterial cell has a DNA signature in there it says I'm gonna make a certain ribosome and it squirts out these little balls of protein chains they call them polypeptide chains some of them are real long some are real short doesn't it depends on what they're doing and what they do is they come up and they transcribe into rna this is the immune system but in addition to that they create things that break things these are things that make things that create new programming in your dna this is messenger RNA. This is totally natural. It has nothing to do with vaccines or any of that stuff. It happens all the time when you get exposed to something your body wants to fight back against. It programs a bacteria to say, hey, you see that thing again, take care of it. What if you don't have the bacteria? You can't program it. And where does that bacteria live? Right in this layer, primarily in the membranes. And now they realize this. Invasion through the top membrane is when you get a, a, a serious issue with ATP. You see this? I think I showed it to you, but can't, you can't see this enough. Essential for life. Enzymes. Crucial processes like digesting food. You couldn't break down the food. Enzymes break the food down. DNA replication, your DNA doesn't replicate correctly. Energy production, that's the ATP, not happen quickly enough for survival. You'd fall over dead. One study even suggests a vital biological transformation would take 2.3 billion years without enzymes. And it happens in one second with the enzymes. 2.3 billion years. That's all half-lives jiggling and doing all this stuff because of the complexity of these enzymes. And the only one thing that creates the enzymes is bacteria. Now, in essence, enzymes are indispensable for efficient, timely execution of biochemical reactions, enabling the complex processes that define life. In other words, you die without them in literally fractions of seconds. The reactions might take years without enzymes and they occur within fractions of seconds with them. This is not hard to understand. We're missing the bacteria, so we're missing the enzymes, so we're missing the biology and the chemistry. Okay, what they're talking about here is exactly what's happening in us. They're saying instability of the outer bacterial membrane. So the bacteria's outer membrane becomes unstable we have seen for the from this article is associated with bacterial death the bacteria dies from the outer membrane being invaded the same thing that happens to us we have to stop that invasion 
All right, remember these words. Instability of the outer bacterial membrane of these bacteria kills the bacteria. The bacteria die, you don't have the enzymes. What kills bacteria? All right, there's good news and bad news. The bad news is glyphosate is a herbicide, and they've engineered the plants, the, the good plants that we eat, to absorb that stuff and not die. So we end up eating the glyphosate because it can absorb it and it won't die. But other things are will die from it and our bacteria in us will die. So what do we need to do? We need to have a database. We can get out of this. This is not a big deal. We can, we can have both, have our cake and eat it too, so to speak. The bacteria and an enzyme database. That's what we need. We need to know what bacteria is killed by what glyphosate or any of that stuff. And then we just need to supplement it. So we have to do a, a survey of the kids when they're born, immediately when they're born, what enzymes and bacteria do they have in their bodies? And just keep doing that right along. This is not a big, hard thing to do. And we should be able to do this with a cell phone, taking a picture of poop, and it, it should be able to analyze it with AI. We're going to be talking about that. I have a, well, anyway, test toxins. Let's test them against these bacteria. What toxins affect what bacteria? And we can see. This is not a hard thing to do. And then whatever we find from these tests, we get bacteria pills. We can, we can ferment these bacteria and make them grow in vats. We don't have to have them in poop or in your digestive system or inside your body, I don't think. And then brighter minds than mine can do this, I'm sure. And they create bacteria pills, which would dissolve at different zones in your body. One of them would dissolve, well, you could have toothpicks. I, I was just seeing something the other day, they were talking about having a toothpick for getting your dental bacteria back in you. And um, you could dissolve going down your throat into your you know, your stomach, it could dissolve into certain types of pills. Other ones dissolve after they get through the stomach. And somebody's got to engineer this stuff. But they would have the prebiotics in addition to the probiotics. So you would just continue to regenerate the stuff that's being attacked by these environmental toxins. And I'm not just talking about you know, these herbicides and so forth. There's all kinds of environmental toxins that nobody even knows about. Because the, the whole earth is covered with different chemistry. I'm just telling you, it's not homogenous. There's all kinds of different chemistry. And if you live in one area that has a certain chemistry, it would be interesting to see if it affects your bacteria. But all you got to do is get a, a, a enzyme database starting at birth going up. It's going to change, and it changes significantly as to what bacteria are in your body as you age. And uh, as you age and get older, the bacteria become less vib you know, vibrant. So, and in addition to that, the vaccines, I like vaccines, I think they're fabulous. However, your body has to have enough resistance to it to overcome it to create immunity. You create the immunity because you have some resistance to it. A kid that has no resistance whatsoever, you give them something that attacks them and it's a live virus, it's going to attack and it's going to destroy those membrane outer and then it's going to attack it and kill the bacteria and then you end up with having a lot of issues and that starts right at a very very young age. These are the kind of things I'd love to talk to Kennedy about. If you have any access to him, I would like to to speak to him. I have some serious information about this.